Great. All right. Well, it looks like we have about six folks on this morning. Um, I can wait another minute if you think, or I can kick it off. Um, let's wait another minute, about 30, 40 people signed up. Okay. And I resent them their link just shortly. Okay, great. Uh, well, I'm going gonna, gonna to share my screen with the presentation while we wait. Okay, yeah, folks are joining. I see we've got eight people now. Mm -hmm. One more minute and then I'll kick it off. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> my, my pleasure. Um, did you distribute um, the presentation to your members? Have they potentially already seen it or? They, they have not seen the presentation. Okay. They will see it after um, we do our webinar. Okay. And we will email them out the presentation. Okay. Great. And we'll put it up on our website. That's oh, perfect. So we normally email it out and we put it up on our website. Great. All right. Well, I will kick it off. Um, thank you for inviting me to speak with you all. I'm very excited to be here this morning. Um, for some context on, on me, I've been at DoorDash for five years. I spent, before joining the policy team, I spent the last two and a half overseeing merchant partnerships in the Mid-Atlantic, Northeast, and New York, Greater Tri-State area. So I covered the New Jersey region. Um, and I manage the team of account managers who help support our restaurants in that area. So there's a couple that I know well, Pliables, Milburn Deli, Tito's Burritos, and you know I look forward to during Q&A um, when you ask questions, hearing about what restaurant you represent and whereabouts in New Jersey. Um, uh, please uh, hold all questions till I'm finished the presentation. It, it's not very long, but I look forward to having a fruitful conversation at the end and we can make it more of a dialogue um, than, than a presentation. So diving right in, um, what we'll cover today. So first I'd like to go through how we've supported restaurants during COVID um, and during these unprecedented times and uh, how we're thinking about preparing, helping restaurants prepare for winter, which is coming very soon. I'd also like to walk you all through Storefront. This is our brand new product. It was launched in June and it aims to solve two of our merchants' biggest pain points, which is cost of participating on DoorDash and customer ownership. So I'll walk through that. Then I'd like to just explain this demand testing or our non-partner practice. This is one that um, I've definitely had a lot of inbound feedback on. And so I just want to explain this a little bit more and if you are a non-partner and have found yourself on our platform, give you some more information on how you can get yourself down if you don't wanna be on our site. Um, how to grow sales. So this is going to be one that I'm sure folks are eager to understand. And this is a walkthrough of our marketing programs to help you understand how to get higher visibility on DoorDash. And then lastly, I just like to talk about some of our social impact initiatives. I don't think um, it gets enough press, all that we do to leverage our delivery platform for good. So I hope to just share some of that with you and then Q&A at the end. Great. And as we go along, if questions pop up, you can feel free to chat them in um, and then we'll go through them at the end. Great. So my, my goals for today is one, provide information, how, you know, as I mentioned before, and how we aim to support restaurants. I, I would say out of all the years I've been at DoorDash, I would... I can stand behind the fact that we, you know, believe in restaurant success and um, we are taking a lot of measures to build advocates within the restaurant community as well as advocate for you. Um, we, I hope that you'll understand a little bit more how to optimize your off-premise sales. Um, you know, I hope this builds the relationship between DoorDash and the NJRHA membership and provide an opportunity for um, an open session for any of your questions and feedback to be heard. So diving into support through COVID-19, I would say, so actually back in March, 
when this hit, I was still on the restaurant team. And so I spent many late nights talking to restaurants, you know, feeling the anxiety that you all felt during that time and how you were going to survive this, what, how you're going to survive having your doors closed, um, escalating a lot of that feedback to our leadership team. So one of the biggest uh, points of feedback we heard is restaurants needed cash flow desperately. And so we were able to take that information from the field to our leadership. And within just a few days, we were able to roll out same day payments, which I know has helped restaurants tremendously. I think also we weren't the first to release a massive program, but we did, we took our time and did some, did, I would say, took thoughtful measures to provi provide relief. As some of you may know, we cut commissions in half for some of the small and medium-sized businesses. Well, I would say all small and medium-sized businesses if you're under a certain number of stores. This provided $120 million of relief to the restaurant industry across the U.S. Um, I, we also hosted small, medium business Saturdays with free delivery. We enabled restaurants to participate in Dash Pass, which is our subscription program at their current commission rates. We um, allowed pickup to run for 0% fee. We took many measures to protect the health and safety of our community. So we provided dashers with masks, hand sanitizer, a two week paid leave program in case they weren't feeling well to get them off the road. We rolled out contactless delivery. Um, so I'm proud of how quickly we were able to mobilize during this uncharted times and hopefully some of you on this call benefited from these programs that we offered. Um, we have calculated that the, the advertising promotions provided over a million incremental deliveries and we have statistics that show the odds of a restaurant staying open were six times better um, if you were on DoorDash than if you were not during this time. So then after those programs ended on the 31st of May, and then we were shifting to how can we continue to support the restaurant community? And this is where the launch of Storefront came, came out, as well as we offered additional commission relief and continued commission relief on web links. Um, Storefront, if you haven't heard about it, it is our online ordering solution that also powers the delivery. And this is, enables a restaurant to launch their own online ordering website and DoorDash completely powers the back end and fulfills the delivery. So it enables you to own your customer, um, enables you to decide what kind of marketing dollars you wanna spend to promote your own delivery. And I'll go through that a little bit more later, as well as web links. So through the end of the year, uh, there's 0% commission on all web link orders, not just the first for any, businesses with five stores or fewer. So typically how web links work is you would pay 0% commission on the first time a customer clicks through on your site to DoorDash via web link and then subsequent orders, if they happen to click through that same customer, you would pay commission on. Now any clicks, any click, clicks at all coming through web links are 0% commission until the end of the year. On storefront, we have waived all fees for five stores or less, businesses with five stores or less through the end of the year. And so I'll walk you through that as well. Um, now, obviously what DoorDash is doing alone isn't gonna save the industry. I know it's getting to be a particularly worrisome time. We're heading into winter. I've seen the articles with New York City that they're pred uh, predicting two thirds of restaurants to close this winter. Um, we have been very involved with helping to support and lobby for the Restaurants Act as well as um, NRA's program, The Sounds We Crave, trying to encourage consumers to get back into restaurants and it's safe to do so. So some of the measures we've taken, we helped fund TV ads for the restaurant ad, re restaurant act in key markets. Uh, we used our advocacy tool to help engage merchants and consumers across the US, which activated members to submit le uh, letters to Congress. So we had over 5,000 restaurants submit letters to Congress and nearly 100,000 consumer letters. Our founder, Tony Hsu, has been very active in speaking with Congress, congressmen and women and trying to get them to support um, writing in letters to Congress. And we have continuing ongoing advocacy efforts for this. So I'm sure you all are following it. Uh, you may have seen that Speaker Nancy Pelosi backed it last week, the Restaurant Act. 
And our current intel is that it's stalled and looks like it may be revisited during the lame duck session in Congress um, after the election. So still fingers crossed, I know that is an uphill battle. Okay, great. So moving on to oops, storefront. What is storefront? So basically, as I mentioned, this would be an online ordering solution on your website. So it, it would be powered by DoorDash, but the branding would look as though it was 100% yours in your website. Um, we basically allow customers to place orders for pickup or delivery, and then we leverage our Dasher fleet to fulfill the orders. Um, you could think of this as, you know, you've got, you, some of you may use Olvo for online ordering or Chow Now. Um, this is the vertical integration that now powers that online ordering, but also powers the delivery for it as well. Um, you know, why invest in online ordering? Our studies have shown that 70% of consumers expect a restaurant's website to have online ordering. It, you know, that number may have gone up even more now with COVID. This was a pre-COVID number. 10 to 15% lower effective commission to restaurants. And the average check, uh, we've seen that the average check size is actually 15% greater when a customer orders directly from your site. Um, this is just a reminder, obviously Domino's is a major national chain. They've invested very heavily in online ordering. And this is just a reminder that um, it enables success for restaurants and Domino's has been very, very successful at it. So this is an example of what it will look. Um, this is Avenue Pizza House. This is their website. And then there's a button order online. And then it takes customers to an interface powered by us that enables them to place delivery or pick up ASAP. It looks a little bit like the DoorDash current um, interface, but the coloring and the branding will be all yours. Um, this is basically just showing how the menu would look. This is comparing DoorDash Marketplace side by side with DoorDash Storefront. So on the Marketplace, it's a DoorDash customer, it's DoorDash website or app. You're competing with a lot of other restaurants and you pay a commission structure that's higher than it will be on storefront. On, on storefront, you own the customer. It's online ordering directly from your website. We do enable the restaurants to still leverage our technology, our tablet, our POS integration. So we still offer that operational um, benefits from being a partner on the storefront product, which as if, if you are a DoorDash partner today, you know, and depending on what your order protocol is that the tablet enables 360 feedback between you and DoorDash, you can see where your driver is. So all of that technology will be available with the storefront product. And then it's, it's a flat fee structure. So it's not percentage based. And I'll walk you through that shortly. So this is, this is the current fee structure. As I mentioned, if you have five stores or less, it's completely waived through the end of the year. So you can test out storefront um, at no cost. You can do it directly through logging on to your uh, merchant portal. The ongoing fees, it will be a flat fee of $79 per month. We are, we are waiving this one-time setup fee. So if you decide to try this after the new year, it'll be $199 per store for setup. We are handling the payment processing. So this cost gets passed back to the merchant. It's 2.9% plus 30 cents per order. Um, pickup fees to merchants is $0. It's included and it's a $2 delivery fee, flat delivery fee per order. So the more volume you're driving through your own site, this can get to be very beneficial um, as you spread that $79 cost per month over your number of orders. The cost to the customer pickups free and delivery is $2.99 plus 10% service fee. This is the fee to customer that it's, it's in line with our, um, you know, some of our partners on DoorDash. It's basically about the lowest fee a customer would get on DoorDash to order delivery. And some merchants choose to pass on some of that $2 that they will charge, uh, be charged to the customer. $3.99 is certainly not cost prohibitive as, as we've found. You could even pass on the two, entire $2, $4.99. It's up to you. Great. All right, so I know we're not pausing for questions at each section. I know there may be some folks with questions and we'll address them at the end. 
Okay, so demand testing, otherwise known as non-partnering. Um, I would say this is, this is definitely a practice that, and this is when DoorDash puts your menu on our site, sends you deliveries, but you didn't necessarily sign up as a partner. Um, just for clarity, we do not use restaurants, logos, or trademarks on DoorDash.com. Um, and we only add you to our site or should only add you to your site if you already offer pickup um, from your restaurant. So you basically have permitted your food to be consumed off premise. We see this also as our, our courier model where we're doing a service for the customer to basically pick up the food on behalf of the customer. Um, I also understand that this has caused confusion. It's caused some concern with the restaurant. So I want to address all of that today. But really, this was a practice more so in the earlier days of DoorDash. We do have some non-partners live on our platform still. It's a very small percentage of our business. Um, as we, and I, I would say most, part, most non-partners have converted to the partnership model over time because there's benefits gained from it. But there are a few who are under this model who enjoy the 0% commission paid as a non-partner. The trade-off is they have higher consumer fees, so they're not optimizing uh, volume to the store if, if engaging in this non-partner model. Um, we basically want to make it easier for a restaurant to re request takedown. So I've shared a one pager with you all and how you can get your restaurant taken down if you do not want to be on our site, um, as well as provided my email if you still are having trouble getting anything um, resolved. So some of the operational improvements that we're dedicated to, to improve transparency um, and improve the ease at which you can get taken down from our site. We are now rolling out a disclosure on the menu page in the app or on the web for any restaurants um, that are not contracted with DoorDash. So you'll see here this screenshot. If, if you're not contracted with DoorDash, there's a sign that says store is unaffiliated with DoorDash. You can click here. If you own this store, you can click here to claim your business. That directs you to a DoorDash support site where you can ask to be taken down. You can ask to have updates to your menu. Um, and you can also ask to become a partner. So this is improving the ability for a restaurant to, to reach DoorDash support, as well as notifying a customer that this is a restaurant that's not contracted with DoorDash. We're working to audit our support to make sure that all requests are honored within 24 to 48 hours. And I'm also working on additional improvements across the platform to help restaurants be notified and aware that their, rest, that their menu is on our site, enabling them to take quicker action for removal, uh, including testing some things with our order placer language and such. But I recognize and acknowledge um, some of the pain points that this might cause to the restaurant community of, of all the years I've been at DoorDash, I've very much heard it all. Uh, we do see it as an opportunity for a restaurant to understand what their demand is, get their attention, and ideally convert to become a partner. That being said, if you do not want to be on our platform, we absolutely honor all those requests to take you down. Well, great. So now we'll dive into growing sales. So some of you on this call may participate in our Dash Pass program. So Dash Pass, you can think of it as the equivalent to the Amazon Prime. It's a consumer subscription program where a customer pays $10 a month and receives free delivery from participating restaurants plus a lower service fee. So service fee is 5% plus free delivery if a restaurant signed up on Dash Pass. This, the benefit of this is one, you get top of that placement. You get placement in a carousel that you're a participating Dash Pass restaurant. Customers are two times, you know, they will order two times more than a regular customer per month. So it averages about five orders per month. And your customer saves about four to five dollars per order. Dash Pass merchants also get the benefit of some of our limited time offers. So this summer we offer 10% off all pickup orders through June 30th for Dash Pass members. And that was funded by DoorDash and it was advertised on a banner on our site. 
I, I should mention that the cost of participating in Dash Pass is a little bit higher than a, than potentially your current commission rate, um, and that is to fund and help supplement the free delivery cost to customer. You may have heard that we partnered with Chase, especially being in the New Jersey and New York region, which has a very high usage rate for Chase credit cards. We partnered with them, we announced this last January, and we are offering free Dash Pass benefits to cardholders. And what you, re what you receive as a customer depends on which card you own. And as you can see here, the different scale of benefits. But we've seen this has drastically increased our Dash Pass adoption rate, making it uh, even more important to participate in Dash Pass as a restaurant. Shockingly, 50% of U.S. households have a relationship with Chase, um, and so 100% of Chase cards now come with an embedded Dash Pass benefit. We've also recently updated our offers hub, and so any restaurant that's participating in a promotion, and you can opt in and out of promotions very easily within your merchant portal, and you don't have to sign up for any committed time. You can go on for a day and you can come off. You can go on for a week. It's very easy. But any restaurants that have opted into a promotion will now show up in this new offers hub carousel. So customers that are looking to try a new restaurant and you know want to have a promotion to do so to minimize their feeling of risk to try something new or you know, are otherwise deal savvy as many of the folks in the New York City region we've found to be are. Um, there's a special offers hub carousel where a customer can see all of the offers available to them. Additionally, our new customer acquisition promotional tool, which is first order 20% off, this targets new customers in the app. Uh, and so basically this is how you would entice a new customer to order from your restaurant, not necessarily a new customer to DoorDash. And then order again and save is our marketing program to help target customer attention for any consumers who've ordered from you, but haven't done so in 45 days or greater. So just walking you through this, what's Offers Hub? This is some more images of what this looks like. We found that order frequency drives consumers to order two times more off, often. 33% visitors revisit to explore offers have at least once a week, and there's higher conversion rate. Uh, to no surprise, it's lower cost to the consumer. First order X percent off. So as I mentioned, I should update that slide. It's not necessarily 20%. It's up to you. You can do 15, 20, or 25%. And you cover the cost of discount, of the discount. We charge commission on the discounted price, not the whole price. And this is a way to attract new customers to your store. We found this to be very, very effective in increasing your sales. I've seen it increase restaurant sales 50%, where they get that top of app placement, a customer discovers you for the first time, and then comes back at a rate of you know, 30 to 50%. They're now coming back to order from your revenue. Um, this is saying 36% increase in revenue. I, I've seen it done, done that and better. And then lastly, order again and save. So this is, as I mentioned, a similar type promotion, but you're targeting a new cust a different type of customer. This is a customer who's who may have ordered who, who has ordered from you and has not returned in 45 days. So this we've seen to be very beneficial to re-engage with those customers on our site. Great. And then lastly, before we head into QA, just to share some of our social impact programs. Um, black owned business and and Black owned has been a big theme this spring and summer with a series of unfortunate events, as we all are, all are aware. We have leaned in very heavily to support black owned businesses on DoorDash and other um, you know, minorities, minority owned restaurants on our site. We have a black owned business carousel. And so we really are trying to promote and help black owned businesses. And we're offering $0 delivery fees for merchant partners in this program to the end of the year. Um, and then also Kitchens Without Borders. So this is our our program to help support restaurants who come from immigrant, you know, who are within the immigrant community. You all may or may not know Tony Shu, our founder. He was, you know, he came over from China with his family. Um, his mother was a doctor by trade, but couldn't practice here. So they opened restaurants and they owned a mom and pop shop. 
And so it's really at the heart of who we are and, and the heart of our culture is supporting the local restaurant community and the local, you know, one location shops. Okay, great. So that is it I, in the appendix here if we get to it if you're interested it kind of explains what commissions cover but why don't we dive into q a and i can go over that if it comes up okay great any any questions oh. i can't put on my video but that's okay oh. <laughs> um i I don't see any questions in the Q&A box at the moment. Um, and you covered all the fees. So the one question that we, we were emailed was about fees. So you covered the fees in your presentation. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask them in the q and I I don't see anything. Well, Katie, since there's no questions, thank you very much for joining us. Um, I will send out this presentation to all of our members, as well as post it up on our website uh, sometime today. And I can give out your email if anyone has additional questions. Sure. Yep. Okay. It's just Katie at DoorDash. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Great. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Reach out to me if you need anything. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You would need to end it. Okay. Stop recording.